In this video, we're going to look at using the target selector to highlight sections of a page. And there's a couple of reasons why we might do this. And really the focus on this video is looking at the target selector and how it can be used uh, to add functionality and rid uh, the need for JavaScript, uh, particularly libraries like jQuery, where plugins for this kind of thing do actually exist, but really they're unnecessary. So um, let's just imagine a page like this. Um, all I have at the moment is just a header here and then just two paragraphs of text. Uh, these all have IDs on them. So if I inspect this, we've got sections here with ID section one and then so and so on until section 10. So as you'd expect with a browser, you would do a hash and then section one, for example. And what this would do is it would place you at the point of that specific ID. So if I do that, you can see it's placed me at that point, so just above the uh, section element. So if I was to do, for example, section 10, uh, this brings me down to the bottom of the page, but this is really the problem. The reason that we have this yellow highlight that you've just seen animate is because um, when we want to tell the user, you know, say we're linking from an external site, we want to go from um, some site to section 10 on our website, this to me looks like it would normally be section 10 because it's brought me down to this point on the page and I would immediately think that this would be section 10. But in actual fact it isn't, this is section 10, it's just that obviously the browser can't come down any further. You might have a footer, yes, but it might not always be the case. So what we're doing here is without JavaScript at all, we're actually detecting which ID has been selected and then we're styling that ID using the CSS target selector. Um, and not only that, we're going to look at doing a, an animation as well. So we're going to create an animation, uh, which is the flash that you see here. So we'll be looking at CSS animations. So the first thing that we're going to do on this is generate the markup. I'm using Emmet, so this is going to make it really, really easy to generate. If you don't have Emmet, perhaps go ahead and install it for your uh, favorite text editor or the text editor that you're using, and then follow along the shortcut that I expand out into markup. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. You can just sort of watch and, uh, and not actually uh, write this code out. So let's uh, jump over to the text editor and start writing this out, and then we'll look at the CSS side of things. Okay then, so over in my text editor, um, I haven't got much here at the moment, just a basic HTML5 uh, doc layout here, and I'm linking in this main.css style sheet just here. Uh, at the moment this is empty, so we're going to do things completely from scratch. Now what I want to do is generate uh, some section elements with header ones and a couple of paragraphs inside, um, and I want to generate 10 of these. So I'm using Emmet, like I said, to expand this out. Um, it's really, really useful to, to use this. So we want some section elements and we want the IDs of these um, to be section and then the number. You can also use a hash here if you don't want to use the attribute uh, attribute modifier. So inside of these we want head, header ones and these header ones uh, need to contain some lorem ipsum. So we use the lipsum generator built in here and I'm going to do these at uh, 10 words. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to use our, um, well, we want to shift back one element because we've come inside of here. And then next to the H1, we want, say, two paragraphs worth of uh, text. And in here, we'll put some more lorem ipsum and let's say 150 this time. So this should expand out nicely to this markup. Like I said, we've got our section element here. We've got an ID of section one, and that will be the same for section two, section three. That's where the dollar sign replaced it. We've then got an H1 and two paragraphs here, and that goes on all the way to 10 of these. So if we head over to the browser, there we go. So we've got nice uh, markup in here. So if I was to add a hash on now, say section 10, uh, you can see that that goes all the way to the bottom of the page. So we're getting the result we expected. So once you've got some markup like this in place, we now want to create the functionality that actually styles something based on its ID. And previously you might have thought, well, you know, use JavaScript for that. Detect the hash in the URL and then apply styles accordingly to the element that matches uh, with the same ID. But we can actually use the target pseudo selector in, in CSS to do this. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to target any section 
with a specific ID. We don't have to actually enter the ID. That would be very, very complicated. Um, and really, you shouldn't be styling sections based on this. Uh, you know, uh, maybe look up the actual definition of a section. But either way, we're going to say section here. And then we're going to use the target selector. So this is all we need to do. And the way this works is what's going to happen is it's going to say, well, is there a section 10 in the uh, URL? Because there is a section with an ID of section 10, if we just find it here. So it's going to it's going to match basically. And then anything that matches based on its ID in the hash part of the URL, we can style. So for example, I could then choose to have the background color of yellow for any element that matches. So in this case, when I visit section 10, we get a yellow background. Same with section nine and so on and so forth. You can imagine that it, it will do this for every single one. Now, this isn't great because we don't want to consistently show a yellow background. That's gonna be a little bit annoying for the user. Instead, what we wanna do is just implement a little keyframe um, or an animation here, just to flash uh, a bit of yellow. So what we'll do is we'll say for half of the animation we'll have yellow and then for the rest we'll have a transparent background that will just flash it on and off. Uh, you don't need to do it this way but there, you know there are tons of ways to do this. So what we want to do here is we want to define our keyframes. So we want to say WebKit, so we're vendor prefixing this, keyframes, flash, so this is the name of the keyframe uh, set or whatever you want to call it. And then we define the percentage. Um, and then another percentage. So in this case, all we're doing is we're saying, well, we want half of this to have a yellow background and then the rest of the animation for 50%, we want it to be transparent. And we can use ease in and out to make this look quite nice. So we're gonna say background color yellow. And then for the next, uh, for the 50, last 50%, 50%, we're gonna say background color uh, transparent, or you can say none or something like that. So, now that we've done this, we can actually add in that we want this animation to run and then we can choose things like the duration, how many times it's repeated. So we're going to use a vendor prefix. So ven uh, sorry, WebKit animation, animation. And we want to choose the name of the animation that we've created based on these keyframes. That's flash. And then we want this to last for three seconds. We want it to um, repeat only once. You can change this to three if you wanted it to flash three times, but not great and ease in out. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna use animation. You might wanna just look up support for this, maybe head over to caniuse.com just to check uh, the best way to implement this for different browsers. Uh, but now what's gonna happen is when we refresh, you can see that that flashes on and then just gradually fades out. So it flashes on, gradually fades out. Really, really nice. So that then alleviates the problem of us coming down to section 10, perhaps from our own website or from another website. And because this has flashed very briefly, we know that this is the intended section uh, that we were linked to. And we've done this all without any JavaScript at all, just with CSS.